Mike. Le LeBron, the only player that's played uh, this meant this much in year 20 of the playoffs is Kareem. It just wondered, and you know, at the, at the level that he was then, how were you able to put this together to respond to Game Five? Uh, where did that start mentally, and then when did, when did you start to feel that swell with your teammates as well on the court tonight? Um, I, probably when we landed back in LA after Game Five. Uh, you know, the whole thing in my mind was how much rest I can get. Um, you know, going you know from that from that Game Four where we, you know, we expended a lot of energy in that game, and then had to leave the very next morning and. You know, trying to bounce back to Game Five, uh, it was just it, it was tough. Uh, our whole ball club, including myself, and uh, from the moment that we landed um, here after Game Five, uh, all I was thinking about was just trying to sleep as much as I could, rest as much as I could, make sure my body was uh, get my my treatment and my rehab and things of that nature. But staying off my feet as much as possible coming into tonight, and um, it felt pretty good when I woke up this morning. Uh, I felt excellent actually this morning and reason I was here so early too um, but you know it was a good bounce back for us a uh, big time game for us and uh, you know we fed off our fans once again and you know it's, it's great for us to be able to give back to them like they gave us tonight. If we could keep our questions to one please so I can try and get as many people questions as possible that would be great. We'll go with Dave. LeBron uh, over here on the side uh, we know the rigors of the job can sometimes be tiring 40 plus minutes, the travel woes, all the alike. And sometimes your opponents may key in on that as they view you. Uh, how does the game of basketball keep you young? Um, well, I mean, obviously, as I get older, I play where you, I'm playing with you much younger guys. Uh, uh, um, I think my, my boys um, keep me young, meaning my sons, they keep me young. So, um, I mean, usually before games, I watch. Um, a lot of film on the opponent, but my son Bryce actually had an AAU team, an AAU game, an EYBL game in Phoenix tonight. So up until probably about 45 minutes on the clock, I was watching his game um, and watching him going out there and performing and seeing him play. That, that kind of inspired me as well. Um, it kept me young tonight. Hey, Bron. Obviously, you guys wanted to treat tonight like a game seven. Uh, and what specific ways did you do that, and how did you instill that mentality down through the team? No, it was definitely a game seven mentality for us. Um, you know, um, we understood that we had an opportunity to play in front of our fans, and we wanted to try to end it tonight. We came out with a, with a disposition, uh, with, a, with a, a next play mentality, and even when we made mistakes, we, we, we brushed it off right away and moved on to the next play. Um, so I just think from... Um, the start of the game, we were just locked in on our, on our game plan and all the way till uh, the final seconds of the game. Dan. LeBron, um, when you signed with this team in 2018, you talked about moments and, and stuff like that and the opportunity to have these special moments here, but all sorts of circumstances kept a lot of those from happening, injuries, COVID, no crowds, et cetera. Um, was there any moment tonight that stood out to you as like, this this is why you wanted to be a Laker. Um, I just wanted to be a part of a you know a historical franchise when I decided to come here and um, be able to just change the narrative of what the franchise has been going through before I got here for a few years. Uh, um, you know, obviously this franchise is known for for winning championships and, and winning big and playing in big games and being a part of postseason and the fans coming out and, and having an opportunity to to be a part of that. So um, you know. You know, tonight is another moment that I've always envisioned. Um, um, you know, and when I became part of this franchise, and like you said, because of circumstances, things of that nature, COVID and, um, you know, injuries and things of that nature, we haven't had many postseason games with a full capacity season. Um, but a uh, full capacity stadium. So, but um, so far we've had three and they've been electric um, in this postseason and we we'll hope to continue that in the next round. Yolan. Bron, how dominant was AD defensively during this series? Um, I think he was 80. Um, I think he was 80. Um, I think we all know, the world knows, the, the, the basketball guys know, the, the competition know that how dominant 80 is defensively. Um, so um, he was 80. Um, he was spectacular. BT. LeBron, Darvin said that you shared some things with the guys after the game was over about the next level. What did you say to them, and why was it important for you to share that with that team? 
because uh, we got a young ball club uh, with not much experience in the postseason. So I just try to give my knowledge um, about, you know, uh, what I've been through and uh, what they could expect. You know, so as hard as this series felt and as hard as this series was, uh, it gets even harder um, when you move a level up. Um, so we was able to conquer level one, and now we move to level, level two. And it gets harder and harder. So, um, you know, they, they understood that, and, um, you know, they'll be ready for it. Last two, go Ramona, and then we'll end with Rachel. Bron, you, you talked about just the connection with the crowd in, in this game. Do you feel a deeper connection with the crowd in L.A. this year? Just as Dan mentioned that you have you didn't get to do that in 2020 and 21 and all that. I know Jack Nicholson was here for the first time since the since uh, the last year's season opener. Do, do you feel that building as these playoffs go on and you get to play in front of this home crowd? Um, I mean, I feel blessed to be able to play the game anytime I put on a uniform and to be able to Put on a Laker uniform and play for such a historical franchise. It's, it's an always an honor. Um, the connection, I think, you got to ask the, the fan. You got to ask the Laker fans what the connection is between uh, me and them. Um, you know, I feel welcome. Um, I'm happy to go out there and perform and showcase what I'm still able to do. Um, 20 years in the game, and uh, hopefully, I just add to more memories that they've had for so long with so many great players and so many great teams. And hopefully I could be a part of some of those memories. Last question. LeBron, what was your first thought when you saw the schedule for the next round being every other night and what challenge is that? Um, well, it's, it's definitely going to be a challenge. Um, but both teams have to go through it. Um, you know, it's us in either Sacramento or, or, or Golden State. We're going to be on, both on the same schedule. The plus is that it's not a, a four-hour flight like we were just taking to go to Memphis and losing two hours, you know, during the process. So you was, you was losing six hours just going back there right off jump. So, um, you know, we stay in the same time zone. We stay in the same state. It's an hour flight to each place, less if it's sack, a little bit more if it's to the bay. Um, so that definitely helps. I know, I know you guys are happy about that as well. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially BT, he going to wine country no matter where we go. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he already he wrote them notes down already. He tapping in already. So, uh, it's all good, man. NBA is in a good place. All right, appreciate it. Thanks. Wine country.